still on national matters, Justice Silei Shuaibu of the Federal High Court Calabar in Cross River State has granted bail to detain journalist Agba Jalingo in the sum of 10 million naira with one shorty in like sum. Jalingo, who is facing a four count bordering on terrorism and treason, spent 175 days in detention before he was finally granted bail. In granting the bail, Justice Shuaibu attached other conditions, such as Jalingo must not travel outside the country without the consent of the court, deposit refundable cash of 700,000 naira with the court registrar, who will pay it into an interest yielding account with the commercial bank, and the shorty must be resident within the jurisdiction of the court with a verifiable address and show means that he will be able to forfeit the bail bond. Other conditions are that both of the defendant, both the defendant and the shorty must each submit two passport photographs to the court and Jalingo must depose to an oath that he will be available in court for trials. Now, the trial of Sahara reporters Bondisha Omoyele Shaware and his co-defendant Olawale Bakari on amended charges of treasonable felony and conspiracy was again stalled on Thursday at the Federal High Court in Abuja. The defendants were rearranged on Thursday but could not proceed to trial as scheduled on the basis that the prosecution had yet to serve the defense copies of the electronic video CDs it intended to rely on. The judge, Justice Ijoma Ojuku, who noted that she had long issued the order for the service of the materials on the defendants, however, acceded to the prosecution's request for two weeks to compile the materials and have them served to the defense. The prosecution counsel from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, Aminu Alidu, while responding to the requests for the VCDs by the defense counsel, Abdul Mahmoud, said the AGF, which nearly took over the case from the Department of State Services, was not aware of the court's order for the service of the materials on the defense. He assured, that the courts, uh, he assured the court rather that the prosecution was much ready for the case and would present its witnesses within four days. The judge fixed March the 11th to 13th for the trial. And joining me uh, via a phone conversation is Malaki Ugumadu, who is the former president uh, of CDHR. Good morning, Mr. Ugumadu. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you again this morning. And it's good to have you. Now, let's ask you very quickly, what do you make of the late filing of charges and the reoccurrence of adjournment of Shawares' case that made Justice Ojuku award a 200,000 naira fine against the federal government? Well, what has become very evident from the proceedings of the court yesterday is what could easily be characterized as a very funny operations of the state in relation to the prosecution uh, of Omoyele uh, Shongwe and uh, his co-accused. Indeed, there is a sense in which Nigerians and all discerning uh, observers could now interpret it to be the persecution of Shongwe and uh, Bakari. In the sense that, given the time that it took the prosecution to get to this point where they had boasted that they had a case against the whole of Sohara and the Matale, everyone would have thought that once the case resumes for trial, trial will indeed start. And the way to start a trial in a criminal proceeding it's not just merely to arrange the accused persons or the defendant. Mm -hmm. It is actually to bring in your witnesses on to the witness board and lead them in evidence, producing and tendering the, the body of evidence that you think you have. Now, make no mistake about it. Uh, as a matter of fact, and uh, within the remix of our criminal jurisprudence, charges can be amended. And once they are amended by the prosecution, the accused person, well, they are, they are now called defendants, will be rearranged to take their plea with respect to the amended charge or with respect to the fresh charge. Uh, and don't forget that uh, this matter has been taken over by the Attorney General of the Federation, away from the uh, DSA. 
which has gone along uh, been in charge this matter. And that is important to that the power of the Attorney General is the one to the form of the Constitution. So the big question is why were they not ready to move on with uh, the trial as I guess today? All right, this will now, move on. That, that is a pointer because as it were, you will find that that alone insulated the judge. The trial judge will not impose a fine or a cost, as the case may be, except, of course, that he or she perceives uh, some um, lack of diligence on the part of the prosecution. Right. Let's go to uh, now the international, uh, the human rights commun uh, community or movement. How do you think they perceive the ongoing trial of, you know, the convener of the Revolution Now movement, uh, Omoye Leshaware? Please say that again, our perception. Okay, so I'm asking, how does the human rights movement, in your opinion, perceive the ongoing trial of Showare? Oh, well, no, perception is not really what the issues are with respect to trial. It is what you observe. Uh, I have tried to, you know, give what our impressions are with my uh, opening remarks. Mm. But with respect to what is going on, it has gone beyond perception. Yeah. It is now at the point where even in Limini, at the preliminary stage, the prosecution is already incurring the route. Mm. <laughs> and and then please listen carefully. The fine is meant to be paid before the trial can go on. Mm. Uh, that for us beginning to point in the direction of how very serious, how very prepared, and above all, the, the, the whole uh, notion about um, there wasn't anything in this matter. But I think that the good news is that the people you have brought to court are ready to face trial. Their defenses are prepared, they are in court, and they have requested for the body of evidence not snatches of the evidence that you have, which they are entitled to, pursuant to their constitutional right to fair hearing. Uh, and I think um, it's going to be a huge commentary, not, on, not only on this country, but on the integrity of our law enforcement agencies to deal with serious national issues. Imagine the distractions and the kind of attention, negative one and that, that this country has attracted on account of this matter. My advice would be that the state should speak and dispense with this matter in a manner that restores the rights of the defendants as well as the integrity of the process we have in this country. Thank you, Ugu Madu, former president of CDHR, speaking to us from Abuja. Thank you for obliging us. Thank you very much. All right. Well, earlier, still on the matter, Elaron, uh, Plus TV News, uh, Plus TV Africa had a conversation with Professor Wale Inka, who shared his thoughts on the Omoye Lesho arrest trial and why he had to appear in court himself. Let me just say this, that uh, I've been curious about what the government is about over this issue. And, um, well, I felt that maybe if I attended this session, I might find something missing because I don't understand why this case is going on. I don't understand why this young man is being barricaded uh, on uh, in one city that is not his own on very stringent bail conditions. I, I think the whole exercise is... Uh, it's just punitive and petulant. And so I went to court to see that there is something I don't know uh, that, might be that, that might be divulged in, in the courts. That's, that's why I went. Oh, and that's uh, we're pretty much aware that Shore was incarcerated and also granted bail. Now, the federal government is now accused of time wasting. How do you see this panning out, sir? Oh, both time wasting and... Uh, 
person wasting, you know, wasting uh, the time of lawyers also who could be uh, attending to far more serious cases, cases of real import uh, for the citizens of this nation, and even perhaps even for the government itself. I don't know. Uh, but definitely time wasting and uh, wastage of public expense and time and attention. Uh, serious issues and uh, and for me this uh, this attempt to to fasten onto a word uh, some the, the real sinister and, uh, uh, convulsion uh, prone meaning. Like, uh, I, 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 as I said, I. The whole thing just seems uh, banal to me, so um, and I uh, have not yet been further enlightened by what happened in court. Anyway, right. the prosecution was obviously not even prepared to move on after this long adjournment, and I thought we would see what the fireworks they had in their in their stock was, but um, we didn't. It was just a, a fizzle. I don't understand uh, this nonsense. Now, now it seems you've become more visible critic of government. Is this because you are frustrated with the way Nigeria is going, or just because less people seem to be brave enough to speak truth to power today? Um, yes, of course, people are frustrated, and rightly so. Uh, oh yes, I remember speaking to one of the. Um, were not spokesmen, government spokesmen, but supporters um, uh, over the sewer thing. And, then at, and he said, oh, yes, one of the phrases which, uh, which uh, sort of picked the government was uh, his call for days of rage. I, I think Nigerian citizens are undergoing days of rage uh, on a daily basis. So if one individual happens to us articulated in that manner, I don't see that it said anything wrong or false. So this, this nation is enraged at uh, this government, its uh, failures, um, and um, uh, it's, it's quite natural for people to speak up more and more for civil society to become increasingly articulate when they see all their greatest uh, expectations just being uh, Thrown away, thrown over the over the wall. I see the it didn't matter. That's just like garbage. Those putting the blame at the door of the president, are they right in your opinion? Uh, but they have, they have a perfect right. The the buck stops at his death. He's committed a number of blunders, you know, uh, in many respects. There's a kind of uh, nonchalance about uh, civic concern, uh, even including. Uh, security. He wakes up late to very real and present danger, which has been apparent to everybody else. The other other day, I remember a statement which shocked me uh, from him not so long ago. He said he was shocked about the state, the uh, level of insecurity in in the nation. He was shocked. I was shocked. He was shocked. Has been going on the whole you know, right across the entire nation. Where does he think uh, all the negligent, uh, condemned decisions of the organ function? Yeah? Uh, what, what's your opinion on the clamor for the sacking of the service chiefs? Do you see this as a solution to the myriads of security issues we're facing currently? The security issues are uh, a matter both for the experts mm-hmm. and for the amateurs, because the amateurs. These represent those who, who really feel the brunt yeah. of insecurity. So they have a voice and they also have opinions. And in many, many instances, even the so-called citizen amateur has a greater grasp of what is required to police to secure his or her own environment. Um, far, far, far beyond uh, what those who sit at the center. Uh, think that they that they, they know what they can uh, they can do, and uh, so the one set of uh, security chief is sacked, another one replaces it. No, but it's not an individual issue. It's the system, is the structure, and anybody who sits at the centre and says he opposes regional 
community, um, uh, localized policing in one form or the other. He's reminding me of the people. Well, in an earlier interview.